You hate looking back, don't you? I, I, I do, actually, yeah. I've got a real chip on my shoulder about retro and, and old stuff. Why? I, I, I don't know, actually. I, I think I'm very forward-thinking anyway. I'm, I'm more interested in what I'm doing tomorrow than what I did yesterday. And um, whenever you look at things that you've done or hear things that you've done, the things that were wrong with it really leap out at you. you know, I think every, every time you make an album, you're trying to make up for the mistakes you made on the one before. And so you progress, you, know, you, you get better. So, and, uh, yeah, so no, I, I, do, I, I genuinely hate it. I'm not being sort of coy. Which is, which is odd, because that's kind of exactly what you're doing on this next tour. I mean, it's all about nostalgia and looking yeah, back. Yeah, which is so unusual for me. Well, yeah. this is an ongoing battle with the fans, really, isn't it? Well, yeah, I, I, when I tour normally, I, I don't do very much old stuff. Uh, and it causes a fair amount of friction. Um, but at the moment, on Between Albums, I did one in 13, and then I toured that for two years, and I've got another one coming out next year. So I've got this, like, year gap where nothing much is going on. So, and I love touring, so I thought, well, if I was to go out now and do some old stuff, it would stop all the people that grumble yeah. that I don't do much old stuff, and it would give me something more interesting to do than sit at home. But is it one of those things, though, if you are going to go out for a night of nostalgia, and, uh, and it is the classic album tour, um, that whereas in the past you would really look forward to going out and presenting new material, that mm. you're actually going to... I think Sheffield might be the first one on yeah. the 15th on Thursday. Thursday. That before you go out on stage, you're going to think, oh, God, I can't believe I'm going to have to do all this. I think if you did it a lot, yeah, it would it'd be a bit soul-destroying. If that was what your career had become, that you just go out and do the things you did in the past. But when it's once in a blue moon like this, it's all right. You know, it's, well, it's you must be fun. proud of what you did, because at that time, in, in the 80s, I mean, you, it, it was sort of cutting edge. It was um, an essential foundation for a new movement. I mean, it was very important musically. Yeah, and the trouble is, though, when, you, when your career starts for the... A, a big wave of success like that. I've always felt it creates a, a, a shadow that, that, that overshadows everything that comes next. And so you spend the next 20, 30 years trying to outlive your first success. And it wasn't until the last album, um, the 2013 album that came out, that I finally felt that I'd done that. And I got back in the chart. Yeah, it was the first chart I'd, um, I'd had for 20, 30 years or something. So that was the one that made me feel that I'd finally come out of that shadow and I was seen as an ongoing current thing with yeah. new music yeah. and old stuff. You, you, and that makes you feel different about your history. You can look back on it with some pride, yeah. whereas before I tried to distance myself from it. So it does change things. You've, um, I mean, so many albums over over different decades, and you're you're one of the few people that says that the music industry where it is now is actually a better place to be. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. You, well, how come you're on your own with that? Because most people say, oh, it's changed. Oh, it's not what it was. Da 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 da. What well, is it was it about? rubbish before. It was rubbish. In what way? <laughs> well, if you didn't have a major label, you could give up. You know, if you didn't get on Radio One, forget it. It was just so... There was such a fixed, narrow way. And if you didn't slot in that and all the horrible things you had to do to make it... It's so political, you had what to be... What sort of horrible things did you have to do? Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> That's for another time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you, you, you kind of sold your soul a little bit to make sure that that company wanted you to be their priority. And there's all this stuff going on. You had to bribe the record stores to take your records and a whole lot of stuff going on. And now it's not like that. You know, now with social media, you can reach out directly and it's a very, very, very different animal. And it's evolving all the time. Now, record sales are bad, fair enough, but there are so many other things that you can do now because of social media and access to people and the connectivity that you have with fans. I think it's a golden era. I, I absolutely love it. But, and, but every year, it's slightly different than the year before, so it's a constantly moving Evolving. thing. And you've got to keep up A lot of artists it. say that it's, more, it's difficult to make money these days. Do they? Yeah. Yeah, oh. that, uh, that, that re releasing that because everybody can do it. Because you know. they've got old school thinking. You go to a record company and sign a deal for 18%, you're not going to make any money because <laughs> they don't give you much. But there are, other ways. <laughs> you, um, there are other things that you can do. There is you... a whole separate interview here. I know, which I really want to <laughs> do. I am I'm busting know, to go back annoying. to you did stuff that you didn't want to do. Oh, uh, yeah, I did, a, I did some Prince covers once, awful. Awful. So were you forced musically to do stuff you desperately didn't want to do? Yes, yes. Or else they take all your budget away. You've got no marketing, no promotion. Oh do that God. or you lose everything. So Are the you freedom you feel now... Yeah, empowered. Yeah. Yeah, creative freedom we've got now is just 
amazing. I can do what I want. The access that your fans have to you now is also great. I mean, if you've been you've been letting you've been inviting people to come in and, and watch rehearsals and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Which I'm is doing that again today. I are love you? it. I know it's great. You know, it, when there are people there watching. It, it gives a certain edge. Rehearsals can get a bit boring. Mm -hmm. You know, you're there for 12 hours and you're just doing the same old thing. When people turn up, you feel a little bit exposed. You know, you've got to try a bit harder <laughs> and the mistakes are that much more embarrassing so you don't want to make them. It, it, it adds something. It breaks a day up in a really cool way and it gives the fans something unusual that they wouldn't normally get to see. And it puts us on edge a little bit and makes us work harder. So the rehearsals are more productive, I find. Yeah. When you do it that way. But it's all about trying to involve the fans more. And that's another good thing about the way the music business is now. There are more ways that you can do that. And I think it's, it's about trying to build closer relationships and be grateful for the fact that they're there to so bring them in and make them more part of what you're doing. For more of the same, just click here and don't forget you can subscribe for even more of these amazing videos exclusive to our channel. So I didn't really think that anybody was that interested in seeing me on stage. It's not true. Well, it, yeah, obviously not, because we're doing great, because these promoters started calling, especially after we were in the UK and we were at Glastonbury and we were doing all this, and I, we got so much publicity and my albums were doing so great over there, I think America finally thought, well, let's not just leave her behind, let's just see what she can do. 